Hello everyone, this is RaySpace and welcome back to RSS Interstellar in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. This is real solar system, real exoplanets, and KSP Interstellar. So we have advanced engines like this nuclear salt water rocket engine, which is what I'm featuring here in this episode. You can see a 9,000 second ISP. Uh, there is also this interstellar nuclear salt water rocket engine called Damasis. That is not the same thing. That has antimatter involved and it has a crazy ISP, 500,000 instead of the one we're using, which is 9,000. This nuclear salt water rocket engine was actually proposed by Robert Zubrin, famous for the book The Case for Mars, and it is very nuclear, but it's still fission. It's not fusion or anything special like antimatter and you have a little ISRU unit for it, but mainly we need those tanks, the IFS radioactive material tanks, radioactive fuel containers, and they need to contain the nuclear salt water. Now, the way this works is sort of like in between a reactor and a fission bomb. Uh, so it's not quite as bad as the Orion uh, engine, which is one that actually ignites fission bombs in order to propel a spaceship. Uh, but it's pretty darn close. Uh, it is having the nuclear material go critical, but it's outside the nozzle. Uh, and it's not a push or play thing, it's sort of a continuous thing that Robert Zubrin proposed. And so it's a little bit more manageable than the Orion Drive, but you're still spewing radioactive stuff around all over the place. and. We're not entirely sure that you can make this sort of continuous reaction work. So keep that in mind. It's a little bit hypothetical. Certainly we haven't tested anything like this because we can't test it anywhere on Earth or near Earth. Uh, there is also this mini mag Orion that KSP Installer has that uses small nuclear explosions, fission particles, but we don't really have a way of making fission particles. The nuclear salt water rocket is probably a little bit more doable than the fission particle one because we have no idea how to do that, but that exists in the mod and gets 16,000 seconds of ISP. Now, the goal here is to figure out how fast I can go to other planets given this technology. So now we have the nuclear salt water rocket engine and I wanted to figure out, well, given an optimal stage, and an optimal stage means that the stage has the same de uh, delta V that's equal to the exhaust velocity of the engine, so we're looking for about 90,000 meters per second delta V, what can we do with it? Well, I decided to try to go to Uranus, and going there in two years is pushing it. Uh, here we have two and a half years, two years and 170 days, and that seemed to be within our budget. Uh, given that the transfer and capture over at Uranus is about half the delta V that we have. Next up, we have to fix the radiators up to make sure that the whole thing doesn't explode. These are titanium radiators. Uh, KSP Instiller does have graphene radiators as well, but I'm holding off on that business. We're just sticking to this, these titanium ones, which are probably still OP. Um, how heavy the radiators would need to be for something like this, it's tough to say. Uh, it's tough to say whether the engine works at all, so... Anyway, I cheated into orbit, of course. My goal for these ships is that they should be about 3,000 tons. That's what I've been going for as I use MechJeb to try and plot a maneuver to Uranus, uh, looking at about 17,000 meters per second there. But the reason I'm going with 3,000 is just a convenience thing. Uh, it is the mass capacity of the monument launcher. However, if you just scale down the whole thing, the whole ship, that just means that you're also scaling down your potential payload. The potential payload we're talking about here is about 200 tons. So that's what we're carrying up front and then the rest of its propulsion. So as it turns out, not only can we not light the engine such that the plume is pointing at Earth, but we can't even light the engine anywhere near Earth, so I had to set it into a higher orbit, which reduces our efficiency, but also uh, it would take more delta V to get up to this level, so we have to keep that in mind. But anyway, off it goes, and since it's radioactive, I guess they figured it would have a neon green plume. I guess that's fair. So that's what we've got, and it's about, we call it a 20 
kilometer per second transfer out to Uranus to get there in two and a half years. And if you figure 20,000 to go out, 20,000 to capture, and then 20,000 to come back, and then 20,000 to capture around Earth, that's how we figure that this is okay. And the burn was easy enough. I don't think I even needed Pekka's uh, plug-in because the burn time is not that long with this. So that's nice. We can just use Fizz Warp potentially. So there's our transfer. I decided to make it in line with the moons of Uranus. And Uranus is a unique system which is very tilted. It's vertical rather than horizontal, if you will. And that I decided to line up with the moons and get into orbit around Miranda's level, which is the inner moon that we have in RSS for Uranus. And I needed to light the engine just to turn around, and that wasn't great. So a little bit of loss here as far as turning around with the engine is concerned. I didn't have powerful RCS because you can't really power RCS with nuclear salt water, basically. So that's why. Anyway, this is the capture burn around Uranus, and at Miranda level it's a little bit high. If we were closer to Uranus it would be better. But here we are high, therefore it takes more, and that amounted to about 24,000 meters per second. So you can see a little bit in uh, from Miranda's orbit, but still. We still have 50,000 left, so that's not a big problem. And I immediately start trying to plot the way back home. Of course, we'll hang out at Uranus for a little bit. And altogether, I decided to plan for a seven year round trip. So, two and a half to get there, hanging out, and then three to get back is what I've got. So, we do hang out. This is the time warp as I wait for the transfer back. And then we go for MechGem, trying to get us a node back in three years having spent three years and 272 days so far. And that's what it gave me. There's a bonus encounter with Jupiter, I think, there, but that's after we pass her, so we don't care about that. So, it's about 22.7 kilometers per second to get back in three years. And again, I'm using the engine to turn here. And we go back spinning everything. This one was not much of a problem. Everything was a lot easier because the burn times were manageable. Probably I should scale down the engine so that I don't need so much radiator and just deal with the longer burn time. However, I had noticed in the VA or the SPH that as I scaled down the engine it actually got less efficiency. And I don't know why, but Scaling it to this size for some reason gave me a little bit more efficiency. I don't know the logic, but that's what happened. Unlike the open cycle gas core engine in the previous video, this one did not have any change to its ISP as we went along. It didn't seem to depend on waste heat. Of course, we didn't have that much waste heat. I did oversize radiators a little bit. But anyway, here we are coming back to Earth. And when plotting the capture burn, which is currently at 14,000 14, meters per second, I forgot that we can't use the engine close to Earth. And by the time I remembered that, we were too close to Earth. So I had to plot the maneuver to capture really high up on the opposite side. And of course, that's not going to be efficient either. But, so that's another downside to using this. But instead of 14,000, it's more like 19,000. But I do it, and so we do it like this, safely pointing it away from Earth. And remember, it's going, the plume is going much, much faster than the ship is, so that's not a problem or anything. Alright, so we have captured around Earth, it was successful, we have 8,500 meters per second left, so we probably could have gotten to Uranus and back quicker. But maybe we would have used some of that to get to one of the moons or something. So I decided to see how long this would take to get to Mars potentially. And it looks like it takes about 35,000 meters per second to get there in 30 days. 
but anything shorter than that, if you cut it down by like a week, then the trip there ends up taking 120,000, so not doable. On the way back though, going from Mars to Earth, uh, we can do 21 days for 36,000, so that's good. So 30 days there, 21 back. But if you cut it down to 14 days on the trip back, you can see the 120,000 again. So anyway, that was the journey with the nuclear saltwater engine. And with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.